Hey yo, what's cracking big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your man's Nicholas. Big dogs gotta eat. BDGE fantasy football. It's Friday, so we're knocking out another mock draft. This time, the draft app has been updated with rookies. I know the NFL draft hasn't happened yet, but this is the time to take advantage of rookies in best ball drafts. For those of y'all that are new and have never seen a best ball draft, uh, best ball draft is uh, it's an awesome way of basically just drafting and you don't have to do any in-season management. So if you think you could take advantage of early draft positions, you think you're a good drafter, this is exactly what you want to be doing right now. You basically pick a big roster and every single week, the software itself automatically starts the best players at each position. Um, and again, this is on the draft app, draft.com. If you sign up with my promo code BDGE, you will get $3 to draft with. Uh, and in my opinion, the best part about draft is the fact that you can draft anywhere from a uh, dollar draft up to like a thousand dollars. So if you put 10 bucks in there, you'll be able to do 10 different drafts over the next month, two months or whatever. And, um, and that will be serious because people are putting their actual money in it. Even if it's just a dollar, that little mindset change makes things serious. So you're getting a really actual good look at what the ADPs are, where players are being drafted, but I'm excited to get into this one because they just opened up the rookies being available to uh, the public what y'all are so we fade the public here at the hq um we're gonna join here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do a fast draft today they let you do either slow or fast oh man that one just reset um so there's a 10 team open i'm gonna open one up right now let me see if i can create one through no i'm gonna have to create one on the app so you could do it on the app first of all um, they have a great interface, super, super user-friendly. So I can create apps. And then if, if you do sign up on draft, you can add me. My username is at Nick Ercolano. And when I do create these drafts, I add, I invite you guys to come draft with me. So I'm going to just create this draft. It's going to be fast. Fast versus slow. Slow is an eight hour per pick. So each person gets eight hours to make their pick. Um, it's just if you don't have time to be sitting at the computer and do it. And BDGE. Friday video draft. Participants 10, my followers $1 paying. Boom, let's get it. So hopefully this fills quickly. 87 invites sent. You guys are filling this up quick. I got 87 friends on here. Again, uh, draft.com slash BDGE. If you use the promo code BDGE when you sign up, you will be able to uh, draft for a $3 draft or whatever i don't know they give you some kind of thing ting 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 um friday draft video wow that filled up hella quick all right we got nine out of ten people in there that's what's up the brand is strong so we got nine out of ten we're waiting for one more person to join so basically on draft again um what you do is you, you draft this big team right and you start one quarterback two running backs three wide receivers one tight end it's great. It's half PPR. You don't have to do a kicker. You don't have to do a defense, which is my favorite part about it. And uh, and you draft these 18-team rosters. And so you'll normally pick, you know, six running backs and seven wide receivers or something like that. And there's different strategies to it. Um, a couple of new podcasts that just came out. If you don't listen to the Roto Underworld podcast with Matt Kelly, I would highly suggest you checking that out. He had Josh Hornsby, Josh ADHD, who I actually had on my channel during the summer. He had him on to talk about best ball as well as... Mike Beers, and they talked about a lot of their strategies on best ball and how to take advantage of it. Um, but again, some of the, uh, all the rookies have been uploaded in here. So we'll take a look at what their current ADPs are. Let me uh, move my big ass head out the way for a minute. Minimize you. Um, and, and they're really low. It's great because when they throw them, when they insert them in, first of all, most people don't see them um, early on. So they're kind of just sitting there. Come on, we need one more person. Let me start inviting more people in the drift. Make sure the link to Twitter. Make sure you're following me on Twitter so I can invite you into these bad boys. Hey, there we go. We filled up. Cool. Oh, S Scott. What's up, man? My editor Scott's in here. He uh, <laughs> he missed the last time we did a mock draft video and he kept timing out and shit. He was pissed at himself. It's okay, Scott. We forgive you. Came up, you came up huge this time. Um, so you see Josh Jacobs is actually the first running back off the board right now. His ADP is 114. And these are going to be very, very skewed early on because people probably didn't see him the first time that they were thrown into the player pool and thus they went like undrafted. So their ADPs are going to be 
very, very skewed. But he's the first running back off the board. That would be that would put him at like running back. Let's see. Let me uh, minimize this stuff to get more of the screen action. That would put him at probably I don't know running back forty ish. I wish draft had like the number that it was right here for ADP. So it's one fourteen overall. Running back, probably around 40. And w- once you enter the draft, uh, once it fills up, that's when the slots get picked. So I'm picked number 10 right now. So I'll have back bite to bike. We only did 10 because I didn't want to do bigger. I know all you guys have so many friends and you're like, oh, I haven't done a 10 team fucking draft since I was seven years old. Awesome. Very, very cool. You're the best. Um, I did 10 just so it would fill up and I'd be able to actually videotape this thing without having you guys sit here forever. So we have Zeke, Barkley, Kamara or uh, C-Mac, Kamara off the board, first four, not surprising. Uh, so Josh Jacobs is the first rookie running back. Then you have David Montgomery about 40 picks later. Miles Sanders, 10 picks after that. Darrell Henderson, Damian Harris. Chris Thompson, you're not a rookie. What you doing without a picture? Devin Singletary, Rodney Anderson, Justice Hill. All right, so we see uh, all, all the running backs in there. And I think early on, I think that, like literally, I think if, if there's ever a a time to take advantage of rookies it's right now like before the draft happens all their adps are going to be so far up and you know josh jacobs was already invited to the combine so you know he's going in the first round second round the latest which means he's guaranteed a pretty sizable workload his rookie year and i bet once he gets drafted his adp is going to shoot up into the you know sixth fifth fourth round so when you're doing these best ball drafts you want to take value wow these people like really follow me this is the problem with drafting with all my subscribers I make one video putting Dalvin Cook in the sixth spot. And, uh, you know, I'll just take what's given to me here. I will take the back-to-back wide receivers. I got no problem with going stack up. Stack up. Let's get it. So if they want to go, we had eight running backs off the board originally. It was Zeke, Saquon. It's an interesting uh, interesting swap there. I would go Barkley, then Zeke, but I can't be mad at it. C-Mac, Kamara, Melvin Gordon, Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Dalvin Cook at the 9. I put out my running back rankings video last week. Um, I put out both of them. So it was I did one video where there, it was running backs 1 through 6, and then the, the second video was 7 through 12. I have Dalvin Cook up at 6. So everyone who like follows me, obviously, is probably going to be a little bit more skewed towards my analysis. Uh, but I'm fine. You know, Once you get to that back half of the first round, Hopkins and Adams are probably the top two wide receivers in fantasy. So while the biggest advantage in fantasy is having that elite running back, I don't think taking a running back just for the sake of taking one is the right move in this situation. So we had like Mixon and Connor go off the board. Um, Mixon is scaring me a little bit just because that I don't trust that Cincinnati situation at all. Like the new offensive coordinator and head coach scare me. James Connor, you know, I've talked about this multiple times throughout the off season. I just don't love, Uh, that Pittsburgh offense. I think they are definitely going to struggle without Antonio Brown there spreading the field. I think James Conner is not going to be like the three down back like he was last year. I don't think he's getting 75 targets again with Jalen Samuels there and the new head coach or the new running backs coach, I should say, that coached him at NC State. So like I would take Julio Jones and Juju over James Conner. Same thing with Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham moved up to my, actually, I'm not going to tell you, you're going to have to stay tuned for next week's wide receiver rankings video. So same thing I did with the running backs, one through six, and then seven through 12. We're going to do that again with wide receivers um, starting on Tuesday and Friday. And then we leave for the NFL draft the week after. I feel like that, I don't know, this is an interesting year for drafts because you have guys like Michael Thomas and Odell falling to the two, seven, two, eight spots. Interesting, interesting. So in terms of best ball, again, um, it, you, you don't have to choose when you're starting a guy, which actually, in essence, makes, I think, Devontae Adams, for instance, this is just an example, but I think he's a little less valuable in a league like um, like you have on draft because while he's consistent, right, you want guys that give you those top five wide receiver weeks. And he does that sometimes, but for the most part, he's giving you, you know, that consistent 13 to 16 points when D-Hop will go off for, you know, 27 or, or 30 points or something like that. And those are the ones that really skyrocket you up there so um those are the guys you look for you know the boomer bust type players are good in this they're they're not the only guys you want to pick because you'll have weeks where you, your team scores shitty ass points but they are players that you definitely want to kind of pad your depth with and i imagine we'll see most tight ends go off the board um tight ends interesting too because obviously you have you know kelsey Ertz, kittle as the top three guys and they'll likely be going off the board 
within the first three rounds every time. And they give you such a big positional advantage there. And I think when you're drafting on draft, uh, you know, on draft.com or the draft app, you can do it through website, obviously, or through the app. You can play in leagues that are three man, six, eight, 10 and 12. I think I have that correct. And in my opinion, you know, the smaller the league size, the more important it is to get one of those top three tight ends. Because the smaller the league size, think about it. If you're in a six man league, if you're doing a six man draft, you might be like, why the fuck would I ever do that? It's just, they're just fun, honestly. They're just fun to do three man or six man or eight man leagues because um, your team becomes so stacked. But that's the problem. When you have a six man league, Everyone's going to have really stacked running backs. Everyone's going to have really stacked wide receivers. So if you, it, you need to be able to separate yourself at positions where the difference between the top and the bottom of those rankings are so skewed, um, that's where you want, you know, that's where I would jump up to get Kelsey, even if it was a top 10 or top eight pick. Because um, in a six man league, if you have Kelsey, you're giving yourself a huge advantage over whoever has, you know, like, who the, who the fuck's a six tight end? Jared Cook or something. Ooh, that's ugly. I oh, know he's probably like the ninth because there's already three off the board. But you get the point because everyone's going to have, you know, everyone's going to have two workhorse running backs. If you have two or three of the top 15, everyone's going to have that, right? But no one's going to have the Travis Kelsey if you already have him. Um, so we're at 3 8, 3 9. I like where this is setting up. So I want two, two wide receivers off the board. And this actually worked out well because there's some running backs that I really still like on the board here. Um, obviously if you watch my running back rankings video, you know, I'm in love with Marlon Mack and I also had Damian Williams ranked highly. So there's usually a lot of value at wide receiver here. Um, Keenan Allen, Cooper, I don't like it, but thankfully, you know, we had some good running backs fall to me here. I'll go Damian Williams is the first one and then I'll follow up with Mack. So if you missed my running back rankings video, I think Damian Williams was my RB. 10 and then Mac was my army 11 so that worked out pretty well for me so I so I ended up with two wide receiver ones two running back ones in my opinion Damian Williams of course you know he had that crazy streak at the end of the year last year where he played in six games he was their starter scored 10 touchdowns in six games they extended him after I think it was a week 13 or 14 games so it tells you you know that they want him on the team they signed Carlos Hyde to like a one-year two and a half million dollar contract so um they're not like super high on him as a player. I think he's just there for depth. Um, so that pretty much signifies that they're not going to be drafting another running back super early, which is great for Damian Williams' sake. Um, so if nothing else, he's going to be the starter. Someone take, I wonder how high. Okay, so Tyree Kill, he's interesting there too. Um, but, you know, as the starting running back in the Chiefs offense, you know, give me Damian Williams there at the 310 all day. Now, I'm not going to go higher than that. I'm not going to take him in the second round. I probably would fade him in the early third round as well. But all the way down, you know, third, fourth round, I'm definitely okay with Damian Williams there. Marlon Mack, I just love him. The situation is just gorgeous. If you want to get in-depth analysis on either of those players, just go watch my last running back rankings video. We had Devonta Freeman, Aaron Jones. Ooh, I hate Devonta Freeman, man. Even as a Falcons fan, I really, really hate that. I wish uh, Draft still had the chat feature. When they first, first started the platform, they had uh, they had a chat feature, which you could talk to everybody in the, in the league. Um, so Tyreek Hill is an interesting one for best ball, especially because we don't know what's going to go on with the suspension. I'm not going to talk about, you know, what, what's going on with him, but as of right now, you know, the only, the only places that you're drafting in that matter are, you know, on draft and, and in these best ball leagues where you're paying money for. Um, so Tyreek Kill, you know, you, you actually have to kind of figure out the situation and in the wide receiver rankings video that I'm putting out next week, I believe I have Hill as the nine or 10, um, Wide receiver 9 or 10. It's only because we don't know what the spe- suspension is going to be. So if you're taking him in the first, second round like you would have been um, previously prior to hearing the news with his kid and everything, that's a huge risk now. You can't do that because if he does get suspended for six or eight games, you know, that kills your best ball team. So um, I- I'm okay having him down in the third round. I would probably take him in the third round. Had he fell to me at the 310 or 401, I definitely would have because the upside is so big there. So you look at um, what happened in the beginning of last year with LaShawn McCoy. There was all those rumors and the reports and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and then he didn't end up getting suspended. So the same thing could happen with Tariq Hill. And anyone who gets him in the third round has a massive, massive advantage. 
We saw Patrick Mahomes fall to the 4-6. Mahomes is another interesting one. I think if you're down on Hill, if you're letting him drop to the third round, you also have to do the same thing with Patrick Mahomes. Um, naturally, I'm pretty sure my audience would let Patrick Mahomes just fall that late anyways because I always kind of preach um, late quarterback in one quarterback leagues. I hope draft uh, develops a super flex option or at least two two quarterback starts, two quarterback starters. Um That would be a cool uh, little upgrade to the to the to the website. I'd be a fan of that. Um, but Patrick Mahomes, yeah. If Tariq Kill misses time, I think like that's good. That's a huge piece of their offense. Tariq Kill is their legit number one. Stretches the entire field. Um, so if he's if he's out, then then bada bing bada boom. All right. Let's see. Ooh, Mike Williams off the board before fucking Darius Geis. All right, so I got the six, I got the five ten and the six one right now. I have two running backs, two wide receivers, but in these league types, guys, it doesn't matter. You don't pick your starters first; you just stack up value. And I believe Darius Geis is easily the best value on the board here at five ten. I mean, I'm not, you know, I had Dr. Jesse Morris come on, and he said he was a little, he was a little nervous about Geis, you know, not being ready to be to have a full workload until a month or two into the season, which is fine. But at the five ten, you know, I'm not skipping on a guy who could end up being the featured back by the end of the year. So I love Darius Geis there. Uh, I don't love any of the other running backs left on the board right now, but I do love me some Cooper Cup. I feel like people forget just how good Cooper Cup was and how good that offense was when Cooper Cup was there. Um, Cooper Cup was the best fantasy wide receiver on the Rams last year. If you look at the points per game, when he was playing, he was by far and away the best one. Um, and I expect that to still be the case in in 2018. Uh, I like Robert Woods a lot. I like Brandon Cooks a lot, but Cup is... Clearly, Jared Goff's go-to guy, especially in the red zone. He gets absolutely peppered with targets down by the end zone, down by um, by Pater, man. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Cup finished the season. What are you playing? 10 games last year? Scored six touchdowns? Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he hit double-digit touchdowns in 2019 whatsoever. I, I would, you know, I would have debated if Geis and Cup didn't fall all the way down there. I probably would have looked at um, a tight end because I don't want to be stuck with ooh, OJ Howard's really fallen huh he's the what the seventh tight end on the board right now I don't want to be stuck with like a Jared Cook or Vance McDonald or David Njoku I like those players they have upside but they're far from a sure thing this year and if there's anything I learned from last year it's that you want to have a consistent producer in your tight end slot <laughs> all right so we had Tyler Boyd go off you know I love me some Tyler Boyd Ingram, Calvin Ridley, Jordan Howard, Eric Ebron, James White, Scotty boy, what are you doing picking James White? Nah, James White is actually a good player to draft in uh, in best ball drafts. I hate him in redraft this year, anywhere before like the eighth or ninth round, but he's perfect for this league type because he'll have those games where he scores two touchdowns and catches 10 balls, but you don't actually have to decide when to play him. Um, oh, fuck. See, this is the best part about it. I totally forgot rookies were on the board. So now no one else probably knows that, but I'm going to be able to take advantage of that and grab Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders back to back. Depending on who's left. Like I would take Aaron Rodgers here, even though I am a guy that likes the late round quarterback. I think Aaron Rodgers, you know, if he falls to the 7, 10, 8, 1 spot. Yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit rude. People are taking a little bit too far. Or Deshaun Watson, either one of them. Kind of sucks being at the 10 spot though, because you do have to, you do have to kind of reach, right? Because... Um, if I want to be like, ah, oh, you know what, let me push it one more round. I can't because that's 20 more picks and Rodgers and Watson will definitely be off the board at that point. Same thing with the tight end. Like I hope Hunter Henry falls to me, but I highly doubt it's going to happen. So yeah, people, uh, let's look at some of the rookie wide receivers. And again, guys, if you want to draft with me, make sure you, you sign up on draft.com, draft.com slash BDGE. The link will be down below. Use the promo code BDGE. I think if you go through that link, like if you type in, draft.com slash bdg the promo code should automatically be like put into the promo slot i don't know y'all tell me um you'll get three dollars to draft with so if you throw ten dollars in there boom you could do 10 drafts with me i will ah nice pick scott you motherfucker scott's been hanging around with me too much we talk too much he knows he, he's in my he's in my fucking head um yeah so sign up on, on draft.com you'll get three dollars to draft with if you use the promo code and then you will um 
and then you'll add, go add me. My username's right here, Nick Ercolano, and I will invite you to the drafts. And then maybe you could be in my next video. Let's get it. So the rookie wide receivers are a whole nother category. Rookie wide receivers just don't produce really. So, you know, DK Metcalf is the first one off the board at 155. AJ Brown, 174. Nikhil Harry, 183. Those would be the two guys I'm really looking at. AJ Brown and Nikhil Harry. I'm definitely not touching DK Metcalf up there. But rookie wide receivers overall, whereas rookie running backs, right? Every one of them, as soon as they get drafted, is going to jump up four, five, six rounds in, in ADP. I can almost promise you that. Um, so you're going to get a ton, a ton, a ton of value. Like before the drafts last year, you were able to get probably, um, Sonny Michelle and I was actually just about to say Rashad Penny. It didn't work out, but you get the point. The value is there. I- I'm wondering if I should push it another round, if I should push it one more round now, nah, cause people are going to see Josh Jacobs there. Damn. Um, but actually I like Latavius Murray right now more than Josh Jacobs. I think actually, you know what? I might take. Uh, no, Hunter Henry's not on the boards. You know, I'm going to sit on tight end and just grab like three guys late. That's the other thing. Um, let's go Latavius Murray. And we'll go Aaron Rodgers. So when you finish the draft, right, you're going to end up having probably six, six to eight running backs and wide receivers. And you'll have a combo. You'll probably have between tight end and quarterback, you'll probably have five, five spots picked, right? You don't want to go with two quarterbacks or two tight ends solely that because one there's bye weeks and there's injuries and things like that what i would say is depending on who you take early right the fact that i took aaron Rodgers probably tells me that i'll only take two quarterbacks the fact that i don't have a top tight end tells me that it'll be skewed towards having three of those guys right so if you take kelsey then obviously you're not going to need to have as much depth because you can rely on kelsey to put up you know top five numbers almost on a weekly basis whereas on the flip side um with quarterbacks Or, you know, when you pick a top guy, you don't need the depth behind him. Um, so what I'll end up doing is probably waiting until, you know, later, later in the draft to draft my quarterback too. And it might be like Dak Prescott or Kirk Cousins, which I'm fine pairing with Aaron Rodgers. But with tight ends, I'll end up having to go with like, you know, a combination of like Austin Hooper, Kyle Rudolph and Dallas Scottert, um, which is fine because I think like two out of three times they're going to score a touchdown, which puts them in like the top eight for fantasy tight ends. So I'm not really worried about it. But if I drafted a guy like Kelsey, I would wait until probably like the last round to pick my tight end two and grab, uh, you know, Jack Doyle or Mark Andrews or something like that. Um, so that's strategy. Like normally I, w- I would stack up running backs, wide receivers based on value, who's left on the board. Looks like no one's taking the cor- uh, the running backs yet. They haven't seen them. They haven't seen them. I feel like Scott, I feel like Scott's going to fucking take a running, uh, uh, fucking Josh Jacobs. I don't know why I'm feeling it though. I feel it in my plums. I like Royce Freeman here. If he if he falls to me at the at the end of the ninth round, Mike Davis I'm a little scared about now. I had been taking him in the eighth ninth rounds of drafts, but they're talking about how I, I saw a report yesterday that they're definitely interested in grabbing uh, another running back in the draft and at an early position too. So uh, doesn't look like they want to go in the, into the season with just Mike Davis and Terry Cohen. And if they take a running back in the first three rounds of the draft. It's going to be a problem for Mike Davis. Let's see. Let's see. McKinnon. Ooh. I don't think I've touched Kareem Hunt yet in a... Ooh, two quarterbacks there. Scott, you could have waited on that one, man. Yeah, I I have no faith in in Jarek McKinnon with Tevin Coleman and um, Matt Breida there. I've been drafting a shitload of Matt Breida, though, in like the... 12th, 13th round, because he's always the one that falls out of those three. And I'll take the cheapest of that backfield. I actually think Matt Breida might be the best running back in that backfield, too. I'm not even sure it's close. Jalen Samuels, he's been a popular ninth round pick for me as well. Let's go. I'm telling you, dude, Josh Jacobs is going to get picked in the first round by the Raiders, probably at pick 24. And then his ADP is going to shoot up to the fourth or fifth round. So get on draft right now. Take advantage of that arbitrage, as the podfather likes to say. Doug Baldwin. I have no faith in Doug Baldwin. I probably won't be touching him. Man, there are not a lot of players I like on this on this list. I love me some Christian Kirk. I love me some QT. I might just take two. Ah, he grabbed running. He grabbed him. Watch. This is going to set off the chain of events. I'm going to go with Josh Jacobs here. 
This is, now it gets tough. You know where Josh Jacobs is going to go because he was already invited to the combine. He's not falling far in the draft, which means he's guaranteed capital. He's guaranteed touch, touch uh, a workload, right, in his rookie year. These other guys, though, we have no idea where they're going to fall. Montgomery could fall the third, fourth round. Miles Sanders, same thing. They could also go in the second round. And, and you know, Miles Sanders can go to Tampa Bay. And in that sense, he'll be a fourth round pick in fantasy probably. So I'm going to go with Miles Sanders here just because I think he's more talented than David Montgomery. Um, that one's just kind of a... Um, I'm I'm hoping there that that that's me being hopeful. I think wherever these guys fall, though, wherever they get drafted, they're still going to be drafted in these drafts far ahead of what their ADP is right now. So I bet we see a string of rookies uh, go off the board now. Um, so <clears throat> so that's my thing. It's like when you're doing these drafts, you know you. you you always just pick off based off value, right? You always take guys that are dropping that should have gone a couple rounds earlier. And that is always the case with rookie running backs. Let's see, Mike Davis, Russell Wilson. See, that's another reason that's like, there's no reason to take Patrick Mahomes in the third, fourth round when you could literally get Russell Wilson in the 10th round. You could wait and, and stack up Cam Newton, Carson Wentz together in the 12th, 13th round. It's really crazy how... how late you can get really good fantasy quarterbacks so i have six running backs already so i'm probably pretty set at running back um let me just rattle off a couple guys that i do like i like ito smith they're talking about getting him more work uh i have very little confidence in devonta freeman being healthy for the entire year ito smith was like a 90th percentile college target share guy um he was very involved in the passing game and i think you'll see him get super involved not super involved only because dirk cutter's offenses don't really pass the running back but if there's going to be a guy who catches a lot of passes I think Edo Smith is that guy over Devonta Freeman. And he'll get a lot of workload um, running the ball. Do you remember last year, like, how many red zone touches he was getting? He had a rushing touchdown in, like, four or five straight games. Um, so I like Edo Smith as a sneaky guy. I think people are really down on Austin Eckler after how good of a year he had in 2018 or 2017 and how good he started off in 2018. I think he's a sneaky good play. Love Matt Breida. Don't like Naeem Hines. Talked about that with Marlon Mack. In the games where Marlon Mack was active, uh, Naeem Hines really only averaged like two and a half catches a game. So all those like inflated 81 targets and 55 catch numbers or whatever were only up there because in the games when Marlon Mack didn't play, he caught like seven passes. Um, so I'm not a fan of Naeem Hines. I think the Colts are going to be really, really, really good. They're going to have tons of really good game script in which they're running the ball heavily with Marlon Mack. Um, so I'm pretty much off of pretty much off of Naeem Hines. Uh, Rex Burkhead. I absolutely love Rex Burkhead in best ball leagues. TJ Hawkinson. All right. All right, Scott. I see you, dog. Um, I'm a little... I'm a little... Oh, I have to call a fucking site ground, dude. I am... Uh, for those of y'all that purchased the draft guide, I'm still working behind the scenes. I am moving the draft guide over from Wix to WordPress. So everything should be fully functional within the next week or so. Uh, it's going to take me some time to move all the content over and move the domain and site transfer and everything. But it is moving, so it should be working perfectly within the next week or so. Um, if you are interested in grabbing a draft guide this year for fantasy, bigdogsdraftguide.com has you absolutely covered. Uh, let me make my pick and I'll kind of tell you a little bit more. Uh, great pick with Kyler Murray there. Uh, Christian Kirk almost fell to me. That would have been gorgeous. Uh, damn, I want to take more running backs right now. I like Larry Fitz, man. I really, it might be to my detriment, but I like Larry Fitz a lot this year. Um, I think with Kyler Murray likely coming in, Fitz is going to have a big, 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 big bounce bear, bounce back. And w uh, I think Fitz will finish with inside the top 30 wide receivers this year, fantasy-wise. I like Terrell Williams a lot, too, in best ball. Um, I don't like Terrell Williams that much as a player, and I don't like Derek Carr. But I think Terrell Williams is going to catch a lot, of, uh, a lot of deep passes there. I don't hate Moncrief. These are boomer bust guys, and those are the guys that you want to grab you know, um, in best ball because you just need one good week out of them. We're going to go with Tyrell. And that's the thing. Like, okay, since my running backs, well, I guess looking at my team, I wish they made it easier to, like, look at your team in the on the desktop. How the fuck do I even look at my team? If I click my name, no. All right, cool. I can't even look at my team. Um, there was a way. If I, there was a way to fucking look. Oh, there we go. I think it just took a while to load. Um, okay, so here is my team. 
Rodgers, Damian Williams, Marlon Mack. And and the other strategy, too, is like, you know, do you want to take eight wide receivers? you want to take eight running backs? I think, again, you do the same thing with quarterbacks as you did with tight ends. And, and with those positions, you see where you're front-loaded, right? Do I need more depth at running back? Probably, because I have DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup as my top wide receivers. Um, so a lot of the time, those three guys are going to be my top wide receivers, right? Um, with Marlon Mack and Damian Williams, I like both of them a lot, but I, it, I'd be stupid to pretend that they're not riskier than the wide receivers I have. So maybe I do go with eight running backs and six wide receivers because I trust my, my top wide receivers more. Um, but you also start three wide receivers over running backs. So, you know, it kind of balances it out in a sense, if that makes sense. So we've seen a couple more rookies go off the board now. Kyler Murray, um, I like Kyler Murray. I think that was probably getting a little bit too cute when you have a guy like Carson Wentz still on the board and probably some other quarterbacks. But I will be taking and Cam Newton too, another like two rounds later. So I think I think that was more so just like, yeah, I want Kyler Murray on my team. But um, I will be owning some Kyler if he drops. If, if, if he's like quarterback, you know, 15 to 20 in that range, I will be taking him a lot because I think he, he probably will finish as a top 12 quarterback this year in fantasy, uh, assuming he gets drafted by the Cardinals and he's their quarterback. Carson Wentz is one of my favorite late round quarterbacks this year. Um, he was really good in the games that he played last year. Like he was still averaging over 20 fantasy points and he was a monster, obviously the year before they're going to let him run the ball more this year. They bring in Deshaun Jackson. So that's a huge upgrade to whoever plays with Deshaun Jackson. Always um, DK Metcalf went off the board. Don't like that pick. I just don't like DK Metcalf whatsoever. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Big Ben, John Allison, yeah, there's not a lot of wide receivers I like on the board. That's the other thing too is I've noticed in the in the later rounds it usually doesn't happen this way. Usually running backs run out real quick. Like you, you kind of hate all the guys left at running back late in the drafts. But I still like there are still some guys like Rex Burkhead. I think Jamal Williams between him and Aaron Jones. I think Jamal Williams is still. I think they're still going to go with a running back by committee there. And I think Jamal Williams is a very good pick. Um, to to have some really big games, right? Like Jamal Williams down the stretch last year had those three or four games at the end where he was like an RB1. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that again because it's happened each of the last few seasons. Um, and like I said with Rex Burkhead, he had a lot of work down the stretch too for the Patriots. You, you could see how they wanted to get him involved um, once he was healthy back there. Um, and I think people are just kind of forgetting about him. So they did bring in TJ Yeldon, which would be a really interesting fit because I feel like that kind of I feel like TJ Yeldon and Rex Burkhardt are very, very similar players. Maybe Yeldon's a little bit better of a runner, but in terms of what they bring to the field, they could play all three downs. They could, you know, get there on the goal line. They can catch passes. Um, so that, I guess, does make me a little bit nervous about Rex Burkhead. But if they don't sign anyone or draft anyone, then I, I really like him as a late round pick as a running back. Isaiah Crowell, interesting. Um, like I said, I think they end up taking Josh Jacobs in the first round, though. Let's see what we got. Curtis Samuel, he's a good best ball pick too because he's kind of like an explosive player that makes big plays. John Brown, same thing. I just hate Josh Allen. Though I always try to diversify the revenue here, guys. So um, I do need a tight end. I'm going to take my wide receiver first though because I'll go with John Brown. So there are guys that I don't like. Like I don't like Josh Allen, right? But I'll make sure since I do so many best ball drafts, I always diversify. You'll never see me. I get a lot of messages from people who watch my drafts on this. Um, oh God, tight ends really fell, huh? <laughs> um I get a lot of people being like, yo, I saw you take XYZ. Like, what's the reasoning behind that? And when you're watching these, I definitely would not like look into too much the players I draft or the team I draft or whatever, um, because I'll do, you know, at any given time, like watch, I'll show you my drafts right now that have open. And these are all big dog members drafts. So everyone following me, these are all filled with just like my audience and all my friends on this. So I have like 10 picks going at any time, right? Um, Or 10 drafts going at any time. I apologize. So I'm always, I'm not always taking the same players. I'm always, if I realize that like, hey, I haven't taken Derrick Henry in like 18 drafts, I'll be like, okay, you know what? I'll take Derrick Henry with my fourth or fifth round pick, you know? Um, so you don't look too much into the players. When I do these mock drafts, especially on draft.com, when I'm just like taking players, I would say more so just listen to my analysis. If I'm, if I'm doing mock drafts that are based around, you know, actually building out a team and like early to mid round strategy, you know, that's more like redraft, not so much best ball. When I'm doing that, pay attention to, I guess, how I put together the team. But for right now, um, I would say just 
just kind of listen to the analysis I have. Jimmy Graham. I would like to see the Packers take uh, TJ Hawkinson or Noah Fant and give Rodgers a real tight end to work with. But if they don't, I, I like Jimmy Graham more this year than I did last year. I absolutely hated Jimmy Graham last year. Obviously, you guys know that. Yeah, to Foreman. That's an interesting pick, too, because, you know, when I had Dr. Morse on the channel... When, when I had Dr. Morse on the channel, he actually uh, likes Foreman more this year than he did last year because two years off of the Achilles should um, should provide better strength into the Achilles or under the legs, I should say, of Foreman. And Lamar Miller, obviously, I mean, he was okay last year, but he ain't getting it done. He ain't getting the job done. What, I, what I've also been doing, a little uh, late round, little late round hack. Wow. Scott, you're going with all the rookie tight ends, huh? <laughs> um, I've been grabbing Malcolm Brown with like one of my last picks almost every time because what Dr. Moore said about Gurley, and you know, we should be very, very, very nervous about his tendonitis in his, his uh, in his knee. So that being said, if Gurley misses time, right? CJ Anderson's not there anymore. Malcolm Brown is the one they re-signed to that two-year, I forget how many million dollars, um, but Malcolm Brown is going to be the backup running back there. And uh, if Gurley goes down, you know, Malcolm Brown just kind of slides right into that role and can put up top 15 running back numbers. Um, and I, I think Todd Gurley is probably going to miss some time this year. So I love grabbing Malcolm Brown in like the 17th, 18th round of drafts. What other running backs? I'm not. I'm probably not going to touch any other running backs um, pre-draft. I would say a mixture of Josh Jacobs. David Montgomery and uh, and Miles Sanders will be the only ones I touch. I might grab like a Rondi Anderson in the 18th round or so. But otherwise, I don't really have much confidence in the other guys. So we have one tight end. So like I said, I'm going to have to stack up tight ends because I'm going to have a really weak group. Um, so I think I'm probably going to take... I have no confidence in Jordan Reed whatsoever. Um, I like Jack Doyle. And I really like Mark Andrews. I think Mark Andrews is one of the most underrated tight ends going into this year. He had a monster year last year, 583 yards. I've said this at like 700 times already this preseason, but that 583 yards he put up in his rookie season was like the seventh most receiving yards by a rookie over the last 20 years. Like Mark Andrews, and he was still getting targeted when Lamar Jackson took over as the quarterback. He was like one of the only players to do so. And when you look at, let me pull up player profile. And when you look at Mark Andrews, man, he was a fucking beast in college. He, he encapsulates everything you want in a late-round tight end. 84th percentile burst score, 6'5", 256. So he's got the size to stay on the field the whole time. Dominator and breakout age both over the 54th percentile. 15 and a half yards per reception in college. Like, the guy's, you know, what, I, what you want in, um, in a breakout candidate for a tight end. You want explosive guys who have produced before. So I grabbed my tight ends. And like I said, I would wait until I basically literally said, I have Aaron Rodgers wait till one of the last rounds and probably take like a Kirk Cousins. So that's the thing. Like I'm fine having Kirk Cousins, Jimmy Garoppolo, Sam Donald, Matt Stafford as my quarterback too. Perfectly fine with that. So I believe, yeah, I'm only going to have two more picks left because these are 18 rounds. And again, they, um, they automatically start the best players at each position each week. One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end. And I'm telling you, like this is it, it's just fun to do because, one, it keeps you engaged. Two, since, like I said, you can join dollar drafts, right? You could do $10 drafts for $10. Um, you get a realistic point of view of where players are getting drafted. So, you know, come the summer and come your actual drafts, you have a really good idea of um, where players should be picked or, or, or where guys necessarily you want to reach on, right? Like you get specific players in mind and you know where you should be or where the public, I guess, is looking at them, I should say. So it just keeps you engaged and they're fun. Like I said, they're cheap, man. Um, again, promo code BDGE on draft.com and you will get free $3. Oh man, the quarterbacks are coming off the board now. I might end up, I might've waited a little bit too long for this one. Rops, Cousins, Brady, but I think I got a really, really strong group of skill players between my wide receivers and my running backs. So we have two more picks left. Do I want to go with the last wide receiver? Um, I like Traquan Smith in this. Uh, he's kind of like the wide receiver too there in New Orleans. We saw him make a bunch of big plays last year. He's another guy who has a lot of big play ability. I mean, and he's tethered to Drew Brees and that's Saints offense. 
Traquan, you know, 82nd percentile weight adjusted speed score. Was a beast in college. 86th percentile breakout age. 17.4 yards per reception. He's just a big play waiting to happen. Good size, 6'2", 210. So if he can develop this year, I think, you know, we could see another, uh, like, handful of 40 yard touchdown plays from him which is perfect for best ball who else do we like eh, don't like michael gallup i love how much everyone disrespects ronald jones i actually like peyton barber here a lot peyton barber was actually not that terrible last year when you look at his efficiency metrics man depends on if they draft somebody if they don't draft someone peyton barber is going to absolutely shoot up these draft boards I can't, mm. Scott just Scott just said, "Fuck it, I'm going every single rookie wide receiver and tight end I could I could possibly find." Let me see if I can look at his team. Ah, there we go. Oh no, that's it's Marquise Brown, not Malcolm Brown. I thought someone fucking stole him from me. I was devastated. He used to be so devastated. Let's look at Scott's team. Hawkinson, Kill Harry, Noah Fan, Akeem Butler. All right, player, I see you. I'm probably going to join a bunch of leagues that aren't big dogs, audience members anymore. Y'all fucking just take all my picks. It's hella disrespectful. There's Ronald Jones going off the board. Uh, Deshaun Hamilton. I feel like people are going to get excited about him, but like the way I look at it is anyone that plays with Case Keenum in the slot is going to get a ridiculous amount of targets. That's what happened with Adam Thielen. Moved over to Denver. Saw it with Emmanuel Sanders. As soon as Emmanuel Sanders went down, then it was the Deshaun Hamilton fucking show. He got tons of targets. Had a lot of production at the end of the year last year. Look, 8, 9, 12. Big target totals. Um, but they don't have Case Keenum anymore. So uh, it's Joe Flacco. And I don't have confidence in Joe Flacco. And if you think he's a better quarterback, that's fine. But he's not going to be targeting the slot as much as Case Keenum did. So I'm not really predicting a breakout here for him. All right, so... It's my last two picks. Uh, let me see what quarterbacks are left on the board. Ooh, God. Um, Darnold, Derek Carr. You know, I don't have any. I've been fading the shit out of Derek Carr, so I'm going to take Derek Carr. I really like the weapons group that they put together there. Oh, this little uh, Derek Carr, Tyrell Williams stack action we got going on here. Don't ever do that on any of your season-long teams. Do not stack Derek Carr and Tyrell Williams, please. Do yourself a favor. Um, but, yeah, I mean, between Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams, J.J. Nelson, that's that field is going to be spread pretty wide, man. I'm excited for it. Ooh, do I go Peyton Barber, Malcolm Brown? How are we feeling here, people? I'm going to go with Malcolm Brown. I think Tampa Bay is going to end up drafting a, uh, a running back, and that's going to fuck Peyton Barber. Even though Bruce Arians really likes Peyton Barber. And uh, and Peyton Barber's efficiency, he had the ninth most carries in the NFL last year. The ninth most, and his, uh, I think, yard, or missed tackles force per attempt was also, like, top eight. So... The, the team didn't have a lot of goal line stands or a lot of goal line opportunities, which is why he didn't score a lot of touchdowns. Um, but his yards created tells you that, you know, a lot of it was the offensive line, just having him getting hit in the backfield a lot. So again, I like to diversify the revenue here, people. That's why I took Derek Carr because I realized I've been completely fading him. And if he has a great year, then that's going to, you know, it's going to kill my best ball teams. So if you do a lot of them, like I said, throw in 10 bucks, you'll be able to do 10 drafts over the next two months and get you really prepped get you really ready use promo code bdge and that gets you three more um and just diversify man they're just fun to do and then you come back at the end of the year and you look at your results and you collect your monies so uh, i'm not gonna stick around for the rest of the draft because i'm done picking um but that is the final team for me actually i'll pull i'll pull up my team for y'all uh make sure if you did enjoy the video uh thumbs up would be very much appreciate it. Um, a subscription to the YouTube channel would be fantastic as well. Um, if you're new to the channel, we'll be doing fantasy football breakdowns all off season, all summer. Uh, make sure you're following me on Twitter because that's I tweet out these drafts uh, so you guys can join. That's Nick underscore BDGE. You can find me on Instagram at Big Dogs Fantasy or my personal one, just Nick Ercolano. Same username as Draft. Add me on Draft once you join i will add you back and i will invite you to all the drafts all right my team's not loading so we just gonna say walk it i'll see y'all later make sure you hit that thumbs up button i'll see you on monday with another behind the scenes of the fantasy football industry interview goodbye